Quite a few years ago, I was at a conference in San Diego, California, and I met this guy wearing a yellow tuxedo. Now, because of what I do, I was actually more interested in who this character was than the guy up on stage. And after the presentation, I went up and talked to him. Turns out his name is Jesse Cole. He's a former baseball player and owner at that time of the Savannah Bananas. Now, as soon as Jesse told me the name of the team that he owned, it all made sense. I mean, seriously, in a crowded room, he stands out, he's able to tell his story, and the color works perfectly for his brand. And let me tell you, that guy went on to great success. Over the next 10 years, he took that struggling team that wasn't making making any money and turned it into a team that didn't care about its win or loss record, but instead became a performance that everybody wants to attend. And now they sell out every single show and they're making hand over fist when it comes to the bottom line. Seriously, it's an amazing case study. He's turned it into two books and a consulting company. But what does this have to do with dressing well, especially when it comes to elegance? Am I saying you should go grab a bright colored suit? The answer is definitely no. You don't want to be wearing a bright colored suit. That is not considered timelessly elegant. Because although a bright colored suit may be good for marketing and branding and helping you stand out from the pack, when it comes to elegance, when it comes to having a timeless look, no, a bright colored suit is the exact opposite. And gents, to be clear, you can wear whatever you want. However, the flip side of that is your fellow human beings are free to interpret what you're wearing any way that they want. And if you want to give off an air of competence, of authority, as you've been there before, dressing in a timeless, elegant manner is advised. So what does it mean for something to be timeless, to be elegant? Well, let's look at plastic watches. Now, I like some plastic watches. Let's go look at the G-Shocks. Tons of great plastic watches here. When you're outdoors, when you want something that can stand up to a beating, something that's relatively inexpensive and is going to tell accurate time. Heck, when I was in the Marine Corps, a basic G-Shock, this was my go-to watch, whether I was out in the field or I was in garrison. And not all plastic watches look this casual. I was in a Swatch store the other day and I'm looking around tons of fun, attractive, colorful watches. And I know some of you guys are going to bring up the moon swatch. Okay, maybe that could be classified as elegant, but the vast majority of swatches out there are going to be way too casual because a part of being elegant is being made in a way whenever a man gets dressed in an elegant fashion that he would be able to wear this item and it wouldn't be out of place. So a pure elegant watch would be a dress watch that has a black leather band and a very simple timeless dial design. I would also include a lot of tool watches. So companies like Tudor and yes, Roll. Rolex I'm going to throw in there, especially their date just line, but I would even say the Explorer and their dive watch line all fit within the elegance category. For this next group of items, an elegant man would never be caught wearing. We're going to be a little bit more specific. First up, we've got graphic tees made popular in the late 1970s, throughout the 1980s, into the 1990s. Some people are going to argue they're a classic menswear piece. That may be true, but they are ultra casual and they are not elegant. The sports jersey, you're going to go support your team. You just want something casual to wear around the house or on game day, all the more power to you. But is this something that you want to wear out in an elegant situation? Probably not. The tank top. Now, this was made to be worn as an undershirt, meaning under a shirt. Understand that I don't even approve of it in the gym. I think that you should wear a proper gym shirt. But in any case, I think we can all agree that this is not an elegant man's shirt. So what shirt would I recommend? One that's been around for almost 100 years. Gents, check out the classic polo. If you are in the market for a high-end polo that looks amazing, that you can dress up, you can dress down and has a collar that's going to be able to stand up when you layer it. Guys, check out my friends over at Collars & Co. Now, gents, I've been working with Collars & Co as a sponsor now for over two years because I love what these guys do. They were like, why can't we design a shirt that's incredibly lightweight, has a four-way stretch, incredibly comfortable, yet has a collar that's built like a dress shirt's collar and it stays up when you layer. Well, that's exactly what these guys did. They took the dress shirt collar, they put it on the polo, and this concept right here got them on Shark Tank, where when they were on Shark Tank, Mark Cuban invested $1 million into this business. And gents, when you go over to Collars & Co., you're going to find that they've got four different collar types. They've got a variety of different colors, different patterns that these classic polos are going to come in. Get over to their website. Look at all the new options. They've got these new CEO Chino pants, which look amazing and are perfect to take you from the office to the weekend. But if you're just getting started, gents, you've never bought one of their products, I would highly recommend you just start off with their semi-spread collar polo 
in white. Now, personally, if you want a little bit of color, I would check out their navy, which you guys know I wear a lot in my videos. It's just a go-to color for me. But also, if you want a little bit of pattern, check out their blue houndstooth or their dark colored blue polka dot. In any case, gents, whatever you choose, you're going to get the best deal on the web because I've got you covered here at Real Men Real Style. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. Next up on this list, gents, we've got novelty neckwear. Now, I get it as a dad, sometimes you're going to get a piece as a gift, so you want to wear it for your kids. Hey, that is exempt. As a young man, I remember I was 16, I bought my first necktie and it had Spider-Man on it. I loved it. I was proud of it. In those cases, have fun. But if you're in your early 20s, if you're in your late 30s and you're wanting to refine your overall look, you want it to come off as elegant, you want to go for classic neckwear pieces. So, an easy pick here is going to be a solid navy necktie. This right here, made from silk, is going to most likely go with your dark blue suit. It'll even work with a black suit or a charcoal gray suit, but that dark color is going to work with a light tie. It's going to provide contrast and you can wear this in a wide variety of situations. But what about red? You've heard about the power tie. I'm going to say don't go with a bright red tie. That would probably be like your seventh or eighth tie. Instead, look to a darker red, maybe like a burgundy, maybe even go with a dark green, maybe a royal purple. And to change it up even more, you could go with a small repeating pattern, maybe a little bit of a dot in there. A dot is a classic pattern that we see on neckwear and pocket squares, but it really does work with the neck. It's maybe something you can't wear too much on shirts, but when it comes to neckties, it is perfectly fine. And really quick, I want to talk about bow ties. A lot of people think that bow ties are novelty neckwear. That's not the case. A bow tie in a dark color is just as formal as a necktie and in fact can be dressed at a higher level when worn with black tie, aka a proper tuxedo. Where they get a bad rap is like with any necktie, they, people start wearing them in really bright neon colors. But yeah, you look at your history. Winston Churchill loved to rock a bow tie. Since we're talking about the English, let me give you a little bit of history. The difference between a regimental tie and a rep tie. So, both of these are going to be striped ties, but they have actually very different histories and some of these you are not allowed to wear. Now, regimental ties, as the name implies, is only to be worn by people that have served in those particular regiments. Now, notice when you're looking at these neckties, they start up high on the left and then they go down towards the right. Rep stripe ties, on the other hand, go the opposite direction and they do not have the same attachment to military regiments and they are safe to wear. And if in doubt, don't buy it. Just simply go with a solid necktie or one with a small repeating pattern. Now, this next one, I'm surprised I even have to say it, but then I'm reminded I need to because our schools have, you know, pajama day and I know they're having fun and I'm all about kids having fun, but I mean, most of these kids are seem to be wearing pajamas to school anyway and so many grown men are wearing pajama pants out in public, women as well, but let's focus on us guys and getting better. Again, you can wear whatever you want, but if it's your pajamas, come on guys, change up, don't wear them out in public. And what about sweatpants? What about sweatshirts? I think that if you're going to the gym, if you are out exercising, if you are coming from exercising and you've got an emergency, you've got to run errands around town, point being is you can always level up your style. I know they're comfortable, I know they feel good and you're just like a second skin for so many of us, but athletic wear in general, is that sending the message you want to send to the world? Again, wear whatever you want, but understand that other people are going to think what they want based off of how you dress. Now, this next one's going to be a little bit controversial, but drop the jeans. Yes, I could have said baggy jeans. I could have said distressed jeans. I could have said skinny jeans. And all of those I do think are not worn by an elegant man, but uh, regular jeans, dark denim, I do think it's a classic piece, but I'd like to see you guys step up because there are so many options when it comes to trousers, when it comes to pants. I want you to consider chinos. Chinos have been around for a while. There are so many great options here, especially in lighter colors as it gets warmer, but you can also go with darker colored chinos during the winter months. If you want something athletic, maybe consider a pair of joggers. Yes, I know these are casual, but there's just something about the material, the overall fit. If you're in shape, I think joggers can look very elegant on a man. Yes, I said it and I'm not going to take that one back, but I just like joggers. Next up, slacks, dress pants, maybe made from performance materials. Yes, again, I'm going to take a stance here. I think so many performance materials are looking really good. Just look around, so many great options out there, but the cut, the overall feel, I am wearing them a lot more, even with my sports jackets. And you guys, 
Guys, if you want the classics, look at gray flannel trousers. Maybe look at a pair of cavalry twill trousers. If you want something heavier duty, check out moleskin. If you want something incredibly lightweight, look at linen. My point, gents, if you want to dress in a more elegant manner, then step up that one item that I know for so many of us are attached to, but jeans are nice. But when it comes to elegance, yeah, they still are a bit too casual, in my opinion. Next up, let's talk about headwear. So, I'm not going to say you need to go out and get a fedora, a trilby, or, you know, pick up a flat cap or anything like that. But I am going to question, when you're wearing this baseball cap, is it because you just simply didn't want to brush your hair? Is that the best baseball cap for you? Now, I know there are all these shows out there like Secession that are showing guys wearing really clean baseball caps. And this may be the exception to the rule. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments below. But I think baseball caps in general are overplayed and are in 99.99% of situations too casual to be considered elegant. And the same thing for you young guys when it comes to bucket hats. I think actually they're going out of fashion. So, it's like one of those flashes in the pan. And gents, again, to be clear, I'm not against those hats. For you guys that are bald, you're saying, Antonio, I got to cover my head. I get it. But if you want to dress in an elegant manner, first up, do you need to be wearing the hat? And if you need to, then is there a more elegant, timeless option? Now, since we're talking about casual clothing, let's go over and talk about one of the most casual, common pieces I see, especially during the summer, cargo shorts. Now, I've been to Disneyland. When I go to Disneyland, I wear cargo shorts. Why? Because it's hot and I need to be able to carry probably like four bottles of water. I don't always want to have, you know, a backpack on, which I probably do carrying other kids stuff. Point being is when you're in that situation, you can wear whatever you want that gets the job done. In cargo pants, I see the purpose of the cargo pocket. It's got a history coming out of the military, extra storage for things that you need. But day in, day out, if you're not using that cargo pocket, could you get a pair of shorts that don't have the cargo pocket actually have a more classic, elegant look? I think the answer is yes for a lot of us. And the footwear right there, do you want a clunky pair of running shoes? I've said this once, I'll say it again. You know, running shoes are great for when you're running, but day to day, there are much better options. And those better options are not flip flops. Flip flops, great when you're going to the beach, when you are sharing a shower facility and you don't want to get, you know, anything on your feet. But if you're going to be out and about in town, guys, there are better options than flip flops. First up, they're just not very comfortable. Well, they're not great for your feet and they're flopping all over the place. If you had to run, you're going to lose those things. In fact, I would recommend sandals, a good pair of classic sandals that have a buckle strap. Now, Velcro, I am going to say, is not elegant, is not timeless. Sandals in general, though, those go back, you know, thousands of years. Men have been wearing sandals and I do think that there is a time and place for them. They are still casual when the toes are exposed. But I get it. In extreme hot weather, if you're going to be, you know, taking your shoes off, maybe getting wet here or there, possibly sandals with a type of fastener or straps are a great option. But yeah, avoid the Velcro unless you really have issues with your fingers. I know some of you guys have arthritis and things like that. In that case, you do you. So, what did I miss? Overalls, fanny packs, too much jewelry. Guys, I keep going in this video right here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here. I go into other things you want to avoid if you are a grown man. Yeah, check out this video. Guys, I promise I didn't repeat too much. Maybe I repeated a couple things, but the majority of, yeah, you'll enjoy it. Check it out. Boom, right there.